Hey, how are you doing? Let's begin with prayer today, our Bible study. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for blessing us with your presence, and pray that you be with us as we study your word today, and ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you for joining me. We continue our look at the book of James, and again, James is kind of a nice little break from Paul. If you remember, we talked about James being the, what again? It's the anti-Pauline book. Okay, so he is concerned that we know that there's a difference between, you know, Paul talks about grace. It's by grace you've been saved through faith, not of works. Let's anyone you boast. James is like, are you kidding me, Paul? You better have works to go along with those, that, that grace of God. Because if you don't, then you've not really been saved by God's grace. And so, it again, it's the anti-Pauline book. Remember, it's like a pendulum. We swing back and forth. It is by grace, by the way that you are saved, not of your works. However, however, sometimes is thought to negate what's said before. I don't believe that. That's rubbish. It's a balance. However, for those who've been saved by grace, we are going to be so overwhelmed by God's grace that we will participate in the activities uh, that further the kingdom of heaven. So people will see through our works what the grace of God has done for us. We will express gratitude. All right. You know, I was thinking this yesterday as I was actually traveling. I was doing a bike ride, uh, a little bit of it on the bike path. And, you know, they have signs about texting and donating some money to help with the continuation of the bike path and so forth. And, you know, I, I hadn't done that, but I kept thinking... You know, it's a real lack of gratitude. I take advantage of this bike path all the time, but I haven't contributed anything. It expresses my lack of gratitude for the work that folks have put into that path. And so I'm going to correct that. I think this is kind of what James is saying. We take advantage of the grace of God. Don't you think it should touch and transform our lives? So now we get into today's lesson, James chapter 3. Ooh, this one is all about, oh, I'll tell you what, the tongue. Okay, I was going to get into my, my uh, very Rolling Stones looking tongue there. I don't know. So it's our tongue. It's all about our tongue, our language, and what we say about people. And uh, let me read to you the lesson. Ooh, it's harsh today. Do not become teachers in large numbers, my brothers and sisters, since you know that we who are teachers will incur a stricter judgment. So he's concerned that everybody wants to be a teacher because there's a lot of esteem in being a teacher. But he's worried that sometimes people have the wrong motives for becoming teachers, or maybe you aren't actually a good teacher at all. Maybe you're going to lead people astray. And so this is how he starts it. For we all stumble in many ways. That includes the best teachers. Okay? And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, well, he's a perfect man. It will rain in the whole body as well. Well, none of us can fulfill that, can we? This is James' point. Now, if we, but if we stumble, he says he's a perfect man, able to rain in the whole body. Verse 3. So he's going to make a transition. He's saying that we need to be careful as teachers. Because we do stumble and fall, and if we lead people astray, we will be held accountable. What he's mostly concerned about is the types of things that we say, and how we say them, how we use our tongue, because it can lead people astray. Look at verse 3. So, if we put bits into a horse's mouth so they will obey us, we direct their whole body as well. Look at a ship, too. Though they are so large, they are driven by strong winds, they are nevertheless directed by a very small rudder, wherever the inclination of the pilot determines. So also the tongue is a small part of the body, yet it boasts of great things. Okay, so this is kind of a transition. He's trying to, first of all, remind us, don't become teachers. You might lead people astray. Why? Because his tongue is kind of like, what did he compare it to? A bit that we put in a horse. It's kind of like a rudder of a ship. Our tongue is a very tiny thing, 
but it creates all sorts of trouble. And he says, you will be held accountable by God for the trouble that you cause by the use of your tongue. Now, what in particular is he talking about? Now, I know at this point, some people are thinking, oh, we know where he's going with this. He's going to talk about doctrinal purity. Be careful if you teach the wrong things about God's kingdom. You know what? This has nothing to do with what he's doing. This is absolutely not the direction he's going in. I know that there are a lot of Christians that use it for this. He's talking about how we motivate people with our tongues. Motivation. Not about doctrinal purity. Seems kind of odd. It seems like he's setting us up for this. But this is not at all what he's saying. He's saying your tongue can motivate people to do some of the most obscene things. Be careful what you say. So listen to what he goes on to say. First of all, he uses an illustration. So the tongue is a small part of the body. This is verse 5. And yet it boasts of great things. See how great a forest is set aflame by such a small fire. Okay? So he's talking about a forest fire. What? in a flame? Well, flames have been often associated with tongues and so are for with the tongues uh, the spirit of god coming upon us so this is not necessarily an odd imagery but this flame he's talking about unbridled flame that burns a forest fire it can start with one person right smoking a cigarette throwing it into the brush brush in the uh, forest and next thing you know it acres and acres and acres hundreds thousands tens of thousands of acres are destroyed because of that one cigarette butt. The same thing can be true of what the tongue says. You don't believe me? I'm going to use two illustrations. One is a more contemporary illustration. One is a less contemporary illustration. I always get cautious about this because I don't want... Well, I'm just going to say it. So, we had the tongue of one man in November casting doubt on everything and everybody whipping up his troops to violence, and next thing you know what, as a result of that, on, on January the 6th, Epiphany Day, thousands, tens of thousands of this man's followers came into Washington, D.C., created and wrecked havoc and woe, and actually killed police officers, people that they say they protect, because of one man's tongue, okay? You know what I'm talking about. The tongue can literally create a forest fire. And then they pat themselves on the back and said, well, this is what a patriot does. A patriot doesn't go and kill police officers, storm the castle, threaten to take people prisoner. Are you kidding me? This is not of Jesus Christ. This is not the way of Christ. We actually have a historical example of this in Martin Luther. Martin Luther did this as well, too, by the way. And he was embarrassed and ashamed about it. Our former president isn't embarrassed and ashamed about it. Oh, I didn't do anything. Well, you opened up your dang trap. And you motivated people to create woe and chaos and burn. The tongue of a man can create a tremendous amount of damage. Martin Luther did this as well in the 1500s. Of course, he talked about freedom and grace and about all of these types of things, and this whipped up the masses to the point where they were rebelling against their government. And he just said, no, this is not what I'm saying. The government has a right to have authority. Well, next thing you know, it, the government took its right of authority, and bam, they came down really hard on the farmers and the common people and oppressed them and killed them, burned whole villages. And then Luther was saying, Look at what happened because of the use of my tongue and the death and the destruction that resulted. He went through, through a very severe time of depression because of how his tongue, how his words were used to murder and destroy other people. 
We need to be more thoughtful about this. This is what James is talking about. Your tongue can motivate people to commit murder, to justify it, to create fires and set them ablaze that will destroy people's lives. This happens in Christianity all the time. Religious leaders whose words create such fierce devotion and wreck destruction in the lives of other people. He's saying, you need to bridle this tongue of yours. The tongue is a fire, verse 6. The very world of unrighteousness. The tongue set among your body's parts is that which defiles the entire body and sets the on fire the course of our life and is set on fire by hell. If your tongue is causing this type of violence, if your words are whipping up people into a frenzy, a nationalistic fervor, your tongue is not of God. For every species of beast, verse 7, the birds and reptiles and creatures of the sea is tamed, and it's been tamed by the human race. Because, you know what, they don't have tongues to go chirp, 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 chirp. Right. But no one among mankind can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord, our Father, and with it we curse people who have been made in the likeness of God. Oh, this is really an important point, verse 9. We speak out on both sides of our mouth, that's what he's saying. We, on one side, want to bless God. Oh, I love Jesus. Oh, I'll meet you in Washington, let's go kill some cops. How can you do that? We bless God. Oh, we have a right to rebel and bring our guns and storm the Capitol. What? How can you be doing both? Out of both sides of your mouth. If you bless God and hate people who are different than you. Oh, those dang right-wingers. Oh, those dang left-wingers. I hate them. You are cursing the creation of God. You are cursing God. Because you know what? Those left-wingers you hate so much, those right-wingers you hate so much, who are they again? They are the image of God. How you talk about them is what you really think of God. Ooh, okay. How you talk about the people you hate demonstrates what you really think of God. <gasps> Let me say that one more time. How you speak about the people you hate demonstrates what you really believe about God. You can't bless God with one side of your mouth and curse the image of God with the other. Oh. Maybe we need to consider our words a little bit more carefully. Because your tongues, with a simple word, word can devour an entire forest. Say mouth can be both blessing and curse, cannot be both um, Blessing and curse, my brothers and sisters, these things should not be this way. Verse 11. Does a spring send out from the same opening both fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, bear olives? Or a vine and bear fig, figs? No, salt water produce, cannot produce, nor can salt water produce fresh water. So if you're cursing the image of God out of one side of your mouth, it negates the blessing that you have in your mouth for God. 
how you speak about other people illustrates what you really think of God. <sighs> James is hard. Let's get back to Paul! Makes us feel a little bit better sometimes. I know he's hard. Um, yeah, James has some harsh words for us and for how the Christian church has engaged in political discussion and discussion these days. We have truly stepped in the mire because with one side we're trying to bless God and the other side we're cursing his creation. Our tongues have created division, burned a flame. That flame is, by the way, never going out until we shut up. And we start becoming more consistent in how we use our tongues and get this thing tamed and under control. So I'm praying for God to bless me and to tame my tongue. Let's pray for each other. Heavenly Father, this is this is this is not good news today. It kind of we have to take a look at ourselves in the mirror and just say, oh my gosh, I I resemble this. Look at how I talk about other people. Look what I've said, God, how I've cursed your creation. When I curse your creation, it tells people exactly what I think of you. And so, God, we pray that you would bless us this day. Help our tongues to be a reflection of your kingdom and your glory. Let us use our tongues for something constructive, not for something destructive. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you and send you forth in peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Go in peace.